Hey, it's Rishi here. And this is the Dell XPS 15 9510. The price of this laptop has decreased from its original since it's a year old. So in this video, we'll see how this compares to a 2022 mid-ranger at the same price as this. Let's start off with the build quality and this laptop has got sterling build. The lid of this laptop is made of aluminum and the palm wrist on the black version of this model is made of a soft touch carbon fiber. It really feels comfy on your wrist and palm. There is barely any flex on the keyboard and the lid. You can open the laptop with one hand which is a good thing to have. There is a prime feel when opening and closing the laptop and it feels very solid. But one thing I missed on the XPS is that cutout you have in some laptop that provide a grip when opening the laptop. Nonetheless, you can still easily open it if you grab from the corners. On the back, it has an arresting silver finish on this black model with the Dell logo. If you mention this, this is a gorgeous color. And one of the main selling points in terms of the design for this laptop is the infinity edge display. This laptop is equipped with some of the thinnest bezels you can find in any laptop and that's a huge point in terms of portability and aesthetics. One more thing I want to add is that this laptop may look super thin, which it really is, but not as much as you think, as the thickness curves downward here. Overall, the design and build quality are definitely a step up from a mid-ranger and compared to other laptops, it is quite svelte. When it comes to ports, this laptop has one USB Type-3 3.2 Gen 2 port, a SD card slot here, and a 3.5mm headphone microphone combo jack on the right side. On the left side, we have two Thunderbolt 4 ports and a Kensington lock. This is one of the things I miss from a mid-ranger laptop. Mid-rangers such as this one from Dell itself offer two USB Type-A ports and a full-size HDMI along with the ports this laptop offers. But in the XPS's defense, unlike some premium laptops, this comes with a Type-C to USB-A and HDMI dongle in the box. Now let's talk about the keyboard and trackpad. This laptop's keyboard is backlit like any laptop these days. The keyboard has that clicky feel you get from the likes of HP and Lenovo laptops yet at the same time offers a fast typing experience. This keyboard makes typing ugly. This laptop doesn't have a numpad which is a downer for your numpad warriors, but the speakers here compensate for that, so I'll get you in a minute. Another advantage with the reduction of the numpad is that the keycaps are pretty big compared to a 15 inch with a numpad. After typing in this laptop, my accuracy heads downhill when I type in a different one. Trackpad on the Dell XPS series is huge and it feels premium and elite. They are very precise and they work in the very corners. When you click on its trackpad, the sound it makes and the feel it gives is very satisfying. A lot of reviewers praise the MacBook trackpad but I hate it. Its precision is good and it works the same in all corners and all that but the MacBook's trackpad doesn't have that satisfaction when you click on it. When compared to a mid-ranger, the keyboard and trackpad differs brand to brand, but still, the XPS is still a step up from even a Dell Inspiron. For this laptop, there are three display options. The Full HD Plus LED display, 4K LED display, and a 3.5K OLED. I went with the Full HD Plus LED simply because I didn't need 4K nor OLED, and this one will have the best battery amongst the three. Previously owning a 4K OLED laptop, I was worried if the display just won't feel good, but it's great. The color accuracy is pretty awesome for LED display, it goes up to 500 nits which is on the higher end in terms of display brightness in laptops. I could easily work outside with this laptop but if the sun is directly shining at the laptop it wouldn't be that comfortable. It's a 60hz display so that's conventional amongst many laptops. With this FHD plus version there is no touch and displays have sRGB at 100%. The other two display options will have touch and better color spaces. The OLED version only has 400 nits of brightness which still is pretty good. And the speakers. You could get this laptop just for the speakers. It has dual woofers and dual tweeters and they deliver such solid bass and loudness. When I say these are some of the best speakers in a Windows laptop, trust me. It's got speaker grills here, 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 and here. Compared to a 2022 mid-ranger, you'll probably get a better display for this price but the speakers will stand no chance against a Dell XPS. This is a speaker from a Dell XPS 15 and from a mid-ranger. Of 
course, some speakers can be better than this mid-ranger I have, but it will not come close to the Dell XPS 15. This is a whole different league. Well, let's talk about the battery life on this laptop. This laptop has a 6 volt 86 watt hour battery and comes with a 130 watt charger. Now, I did some tests on this laptop to analyze the battery and charging. The first one was the video test with the brightness at 50%, volume at 30%, both Wi-Fi and Bluetooth on, in which the laptop took 4 hours and 40 minutes to drain the battery from 100% to zero. In the Mixit test, which is basically my average workday with some media consumption, some Microsoft Word, a little video editing, and a little bit of idle, I got around 7 hours and 15 minutes. Whilst that is good, I expected more from this laptop. But keep in mind that during this test, the screen was always on. If your workflow includes putting your laptop to sleep once in a while and shutting it down for some time, this laptop will last you good. In terms of charging, it took a whopping 2 hours and 45 minutes for this laptop to charge from 0 to 100, which is really long for a laptop to charge. Camera-wise, it's just a regular 720p camera you get on all laptops. Nothing special, pretty average. Some mid-rangers have a 1080p camera along with the latest MacBook. This is one of the areas where the Dell XPS laptops lag behind, but that's mainly due to this laptop having such small bezels. This is the audio quality from the Dell XPS's inbuilt microphone without any audio enhancements, and it sounds decent. When it comes to security, the Dell XPS 15 has Windows Hello using fingerprint and facial recognition. It's a really hassle-free way to sign in. Midrangers have a fingerprint scanner, but no facial recognition. But the XPS is lacking something in this place, and that is the camera and mic kill switch. They're used to physically block the camera and mic when not needed, and nowadays, those come in pretty much every midranger. But the premium XPS doesn't have that. So, compared to a midranger, the facial recognition on the XPS and kill switches on the midrangers even it out. This laptop has an i7-11800H with 8 cores, 16 threads, and 24 megabytes of cache. It has a max frequency of 4.6 gigahertz. The model I got has 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigs of storage, a RTX 3050 Ti, and an FHD plus LED display, like I told before. Let's talk about performance, and this is where it gets a little complicated. To test out the CPU, I benchmarked using Citibench R23, and the highest I got from this laptop is 10510. The most common processor in a 2022 midranger at this price is an i7-1260p. Compared to the Citibench scores of that, this laptop is head, but some of the midrangers have exceptional cooling, which can come somewhat close to this laptop. But at the same time, this laptop performs significantly less than other laptops with the same i7-11800H. Considering pretty much all those laptops are gaming laptops and Dell has to manage performance along with cooling in such a thin chassis, this was quite expected and still, putting an 8 series processor in this is a feat. I wanted to test out the throttling by running the Cinebench throttle test continuously again and again. Here's where things get a little weird. So I got the starting score as 10,300. What I noticed in the first round of this test is that the fans were barely running and only went into full force in the last 2 minutes. Then when the second run of throttle test began, the fans started spinning real hard. The temperature was at 100 degrees Celsius, according to core temp. On the first round, the frequency wouldn't go any higher than 2.9 GHz. Considering the CPU has a max frequency of 4.6 GHz, this is just really weird. Now by the end of the second round, the frequency has risen to a 3.6 GHz. Temperature still was 100 degrees, and the score had gone to 10,370. By 4th round, it went to 10,510, whilst all the conditions remained the same. 5th round, the scores started decreasing and went to 10,472. This continued until round 8, where the scores had gone down to 10,385. Next round, the scores had started rising again. Instead of the CPU throttling, there was a constant up and down approximately every half an hour. When it comes to single core, the scores were consistent at around the same point, and the frequency was around 4.2 GHz. Further using this laptop, Dell's approach becomes clear. When it's at full load, Dell limits the frequency for better thermals, but when not at full load, the core mainly being used is close to max frequency, and this approach brings a fine balance between thermals and performance, in my experience, for such a thin chassis. Dell has thermal profiles which still follows this approach, but you can customize based on your use case at the moment. Okay, now with a GPU performance, I tested some popular types. Okay, now I want a GPU performance. I tested some popular titles. 
I had the resolution at FHD+, but tinkered with other settings. In Halo Infinite, in high graphic settings, the frame rates were around 60 to 65 FPS, rarely going as low as 45. In Ark Survival of the Fittest, epic settings resulted in frame rates between 45 to 60. High settings yielded 65 to 85 FPS. In Apex Legends, the frame rates were between 55 to 62 FPS, with everything at max settings. In Forza Horizon, I had the dynamic render quality at Ultra, and I constantly got 60 FPS. No comparison here. The NVIDIA M series and integrated graphics in 2022 midrangers don't stand a chance against this 3050 Ti. Now, some midrangers are coming with the new Intel Arc A370M GPU, which, whilst I don't have the specifics, is almost close to this, but isn't as powerful as the RTX 3050 Ti in the games. So GPU-wise, this laptop is your best bet for this price. Now with some productivity benchmarks. I ran Pure Bench for DaVinci Resolve here, and this laptop scored a 660, which is almost double that of the integrated graphics in mid-rangers. Also, it's even faster than a laptop with Intel Arc A370M, even on systems that have a better CPU than this one. In Photoshop, which is a heavily CPU-reliant application, the midrangers are equivalent to the Dell XPS, sometimes ahead by a few points. In Premiere Pro, this laptop once again beats out the competition from the midrangers. So to conclude performance as a whole, yes, the XPS is a better bet than the latest midranger. During all these tests, the carbon fiber deck barely got hot, and the keyboard didn't get any hotter than warm. I like the laptop has the vents on the back as laptops the vents on the side will blow the output hair onto your hands, which irks me. To answer the big question, yes, getting last year's XPS is a better bet than getting the latest midranger. This is a big win for me for video editing as I don't like gaming laptops nor MacBooks, and I recommend it to you too. The only people who should go for a 2022 midranger are those who want more ports, those who want more quicker charging, maybe more battery life privacy-minded folks who want a mic and a camera kill switch, or numpad warriors. If you're not on the list, I would 100% recommend you to Dell XPS 15 95 10 in 2022 for this price. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. This is Rishi signing off.